This is the story of Steve Trillier and his attempt at a world record-breaking stunt that will make a car do something you have never seen before. After serving with the Special Forces, this professional daredevil became a stunt coordinator, performing in James Bond films and planning epic thrill rides like a skydive from space. As fifth gear's head of danger, he's rolled, crashed, and crashed again. The bigger the risk, the more he likes it. <laughs> but even by these extreme standards, nothing compares to what's next. Fifth gear's most dangerous stunt ever. We're going to build a life-size version of every child's favorite toy car stunt set, the Hot Wheels Loop the Loop. We'll use five tons of steel and make it a world record breaking 40 feet high. And then see if it's possible to whiz round it in an actual everyday car. And pray this doesn't happen. My first instincts were to use a car that's really powerful with a huge engine, something that would get me round the loop quickly. On further investigation, it seems I need something light, small, with not much overhang. A short wheelbase vehicle, something like that. A Toyota Igo, one of the few cars built to modern safety standards that weighs less than a ton, so it should be agile enough to drive round the loop. The minimal overhangs front and rear also reduce the chance of grinding out. If, of course, this whole thing is actually possible. To find out about the physics involved, we sent Steve back to school. Trinity is the wealthiest and most grand college of Cambridge University and one of the world's leading academic institutions. It's educated prime ministers, princes and spies, but the character we're interested in is the mechanical engineer, Dr. Hugh Hunt. He knows gyroscopic forces inside out and, of course, upside down. Now, I've had an idea, Hugh, and uh, you probably think this is a bit crazy, but I want to drive a car through a real loop-the-loop, -loop, a real car. Please tell me that it's possible. A real car through a loop-the-loop, -loop, like, like a Hot Wheels yes. track. I mean, if I take a firework and shoot it up, well, I can also send a rocket to the moon. That's just a scaled-up version of the same thing. We can just scale up your car for a loop-the-loop, -loop. yeah. It was clear Hugh understood the behaviour of a loop-the-loop -loop better than Steve. Time for a physics lesson. Steve, the first thing you're going to have to contend with, the biggest thing really, will be the G-forces when you okay. go around this loop. Uh, now, it's interesting to see what happens when you go in a circle. Um, this is just an ordinary tennis ball on the end of a string. Do you reckon I can pick up a house brick with a tennis ball? No, that's several times its weight. Right, it's, this is about you know, 10 times, 15 times its weight. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do it, just to show you how big these G-forces are. I'll pick up the house brick with the ball, OK? <laughs> wow! That's incredible! It's not bad, is it? Tiny tennis ball lifting a great big house brick. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's just G-forces? That's... that's just G-forces. How on earth am I going to steer around the loop while the car's under all this G? I don't think you have to steer at all. Really? <laughs> well, I don't think so. Well, let me just think. Uh, you, you, the track is just going in a, in a loop like this, right? Well, let me just make a little track here. I'll draw a line down the middle. Uh, OK, there we go. So let's suppose that was just flat on the ground. Would you have to steer to go along that line? No, it's a straight line. It's a straight line, OK. So if I take that uh, straight line and just make a loop out of it, where do you have to turn, left or right? Don't right. you just follow the line? But surely the track still goes in one side, moves across to go out the other side. Surely you have to steer across. That would suggest that there would have to be some kind of kink in the paper like that. So really, I could just drive in a straight line, straight yeah, into yeah, the yeah. thing and keep the whole thing straight. Yeah. That's a real revelation. That's just incredible. So what I'd really like to know now, uh, Hugh, is how fast have I got to enter it if I'm going to get all the way round in one go? Well, that's a, that's a great question. This is all about forces and accelerations, mm -hmm. and we're going to use Newton's laws of motion. Um, so let's go down to the lab and uh, we'll do a few sums. Right, Hugh, as I see it, there are a couple of problems. If I don't get enough speed into the loop and I fall out on my head, 
That's the worst case scenario. Yeah, that's, that's my bad. biggest fear. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. That's you know, 40 feet potentially onto my head. Um, if I go in too fast, I'm concerned that all these Gs you've explained will be outrageous on me and outrageous on this structure. What I want you to help me with is to find exactly the sweet spot, the perfect speed to take it through the loop. There's a formula for circular motion. And at the top, the speed there has to be 16, say 20 miles an hour. Well, if that's the speed I've got to be at the top to be safe, can we work back to determine what speed I've got to enter the loop at? There's a formula for that, the 2R plus a half V in squared. It's starting to cook my brain a bit now. <laughs> equals RG. OK. Here's my final answer. 36 About miles 36 per miles hour. an hour. Call it 40 Fantastic. miles an hour. But you know what we haven't worked out, though? What's that? Is we, what are the G-forces you're going to experience? Because you want to know whether you're going to black out or not. The total G-force you will experience as you enter this loop will be 6 G. So imagine you have to carry five of you. That's a lot of G. It's a lot of G. And six and times the weight of the car. Yeah, the track has to carry, instead of just one car's weight, it's got to carry six cars. I can't tell you how useful this is. Is your engine designed to cope with six G? Is your car suspension going to cope with the 600 zone weight? Are your tyres going to cope with having six times as much force on them? It really is a lot to think about. Right. This seemed like a relatively simple stunt when we first looked at it. What is really nice about all this in my mind is that you know, Newton's laws of motion, this is all just Newton's laws of motion. 350 years ago, Isaac Newton was just coming up with all this stuff. And really, things haven't changed since then. So this isn't high tech. This isn't about you know, nanotechnology it's and microelectronics. <laughs> this is actually pretty basic, everyday physics and mathematics. And it's not, it's not as if this might not be right. This is actually, this is... This is how it is. This yeah. is how it is. This is how the world behaves. Got a huge amount out today. Just fantastic. So many more things to think about. It's opened up a lot more potential problems that we can hopefully solve. So that's been very, very useful. The most amazing thing about this is it gives me a bit more confidence because of the science, but at the end of the day, I don't know if that's going to count when I'm staring at the track with my foot in the accelerator. doesn't line up, then it's got a bit worrying. The sleepless nights for the engineers had begun. They started welding six sections that would hopefully fit together to form the loop. A kilometre of box section and five tonnes of steel needed to be woven together.